My name is Dave Klein. I work for Rio Tinto and the project manager for the Holden Mine Remediation Project. What is the Holden Mine Remediation Project? The Holden Mine Remediation Project is a, um, a cleanup project of an abandoned mine that was operated from about 1937 to about 1958 by the House Sound Mining Company. Um, it's been inactive or abandoned for about 50 years, and in that 50 years time, uh, there's been um, uh, contamination from the from the mining waste that have been left to the into the environment for the last 50 years, and the Holden Mine Remediation Project is is a cleanup project to um, to clean up and prevent further release of contaminants to to the environment. We're at the Holden Mine Project right now. We're in uh, Holden Village. Uh, we're at the top of Chelan Lake. Uh, what are some of the unique challenges of this project? So there's many unique challenges to this project. First of all, let me state that the, this, the project is a federally mandated project. Um, it's mandated by the U.S. Forest Service and the U.S. EPA. So it's a legal obligation that Rio Tinto must comply with to, to clean up the project. Um, some of the, the unique challenges are the fact that it's uh, located in a remote site. It uh, is about a 40 mile uh, trip up Lake Chelan uh, to get to the mine. So everything we bring up here, uh, including all of our equipment, all of our personnel, have to come up via a boat or a barge to get to the site. So that's a, that's a huge challenge for us just with respect to logistics. It's also a challenge because uh, we are actually having to coexist with, uh, with Holden Village, which is a Lutheran community and uh, retreat center that used to be the uh, mining camp uh, when Holden was in operation. So coexisting uh, with a construction project, with a religious treat, is, um, is a challenge, um, but it's a challenge that we've actually been able to um, uh, pull off quite successfully. It's been, it's been uh, a great relationship with Holden Village, um, and I think Rio Tinto and Holden Village both are, it's exceeded our expectations how well this could go to coexist together. This is a project uh, that shuts down during the winter. Uh, but uh, this is uh, the middle of the summer, 2014. What have you accomplished this summer and what do you look forward to in 2015? Sure, so yes, it is a project that only takes place in the summer. Uh, due to the high snowfall up here, it's just impossible to work. Uh, they get about 300 inches of snow up here a year. So we typically work from mid-April through about Thanksgiving time. So the project has been going on for about three years. We had in 2011, we had some early actions up here with respect to getting the road in shape so we could bring heavy construction up here, uh, building some bypass roads so we didn't interfere with Holland Village. 2012, uh, we started um, uh, doing some work with stopping the flow of, of drainage out of the old mine by, by placing bulkheads in the mine to prevent uh, flow of, of contaminated water from the mine into the creek. 2014 was a, was, a, was a big year for us. 2014, we actually rerouted about 900 feet of Railroad Creek. We began uh, regrading uh, on the tailings impoundments. So we have about a million yards of tailings to regrade ultimately. Last year, we got started on that. Uh, last year, we, um, by last year, I mean 2013, we opened up a rock quarry. We opened up a, a borrow source for, uh, for construction materials. And we also demolished a mill building that uh, was dilapidated and needed to come down. 2014 is, is one of our biggest years. One of, the, one of the key aspects of this project is to prevent groundwater contamination from uh, continuing to flow into Railroad Creek. In order to do that, the, the remedy is to basically construct a, uh, a barrier wall. And by that, I mean a wall that extends from land surface down to competent bedrock, which ranges anywhere from 35 to about 90 feet. And um, we basically dig a trench, we backfill that trench with a, with a low permeability slurry and dam up the water, the groundwater, before it can uh, flow into the creek. Um, that water, as it, as it dams up against the barrier wall, will be conveyed via a drainage system to a water treatment plant. So the big items we want to do in 2014 are complete the barrier wall, complete the collection system that's associated with the barrier wall, as well as um, do probably about 95% uh, of the regradings on the tailings. 
2015 will also be a big year. So as we collect water from the from the mine portal and as we collect water from the barrier wall, um, as I've stated before, that water is contaminated and it needs to be treated before it can be released back into the environment. So in 2015, we will be building a, a lime water treatment plant to, to treat the water um, prior to release back to Railroad Creek. 2015 will also be a year that we revegetate all of the disturbed areas, all of the tailings and the waste rock. Uh, we'll be planting grasses, we'll be planting uh, shrubs, we'll be planting trees on, on the reclaimed mine site. What are some of the unique challenges of this uh, project? Well, the setting in itself is, is quite remarkable. As, as you know now, we're, we're surrounded by the Glacier Peak Wilderness Area, so that in itself is a challenge. We, we have only one way in and one way out, and that's through Lake Chelan. So it's about a 40-mile boat ride up, and then another 10-mile ride up into the site. And uh, Holden Village has been around here for, for many decades, and so this is quite a change for Holden Village. Uh, it's also in the National Historic uh, Register. So there are many historic features here to be preserved, as well as many of the, I'll say, the cultural features that, that come along with Holden Village. So we've worked quite uh, closely with Holden Village, trying to minimize the impacts, while at the same time trying to protect safety of, of, the, of the workers as well as the visitors. So it's, it's been quite an impact with them, but they're fully understanding and supporting of, of our get, getting to kind of finish the job and then move on uh, with, the, with the project. Uh, what it does this project uh, look like in five years from now from the forestry industry what has the uh, what have the what have the achievements have been made and what does this look like in that time well the achievements are phenomenal I mean uh, to the point right now I mean it took them a couple three years to finally get the infrastructure together to get them to the point where they could actually do the major uh, movement of the of the masses of, of the tailings that they're doing right now there are almost a half a million cubic yards of tailings that have been that have been regraded uh, to stabilize the tailings. Uh, we've got a barrier wall program that's installing a concrete wall, essentially uh, almost 5,000 feet long, about 90 feet deep, and its deepest, uh, shallowest, is about 40 feet deep. So they're well on their way to accomplishing what the record of decision um, called for, but the infrastructure work and all of the uh, miscellaneous, uh, not, not even miscellaneous, necessary infrastructure uh, requirements, bridges, culverts, uh, well, barge ramps, uh, on and on and on. There was a tremendous amount of work required just to get the facilities going up here now. The history of Holden Village started in the late 50s. Holden, the Holden mine site closed in, uh, in uh, 1957. The mine did. And they literally pulled out but left everything. The town, the structures, everything was left. Uh, they tried to find a, somebody purchased it for um, development for something, a retreat or a resort or something like that. They tried for a few years. And uh, the person in the, affiliated with the Lutheran Church started writing letters. Uh, he saw ad, advertisement, I think, in Alaska that asked about or that had a um, you know real estate ad, and he responded to that and asked if it could be donated to the church, and uh, he did that three times. The first two times he was denied. They said, you know, this is the asking price. And the third time, I think it was in 1960, they said uh, they sent him a telegram and said, give us a call. We've got we've got a deal for you. <laughs> Ended up, I think it was a dollar and it was given formally to Lutheran Bible Institute, which is a small college in Seattle. And uh, they didn't really know that it was gonna, that it was given to them, and so they were surprised that they were able to, uh, through a, a number of people, form a nonprofit and really put a good legal structure behind the place. Uh, basically, with no money and really not much of a plan, uh, the people started to come and Put, put the place together.